Book of Book 5. This one was one that I was unsure of while I was reading it, but I ended having quite a positive feeling on, and that is Yale van der Voodens, The Safe Keep. Fuck that up. I found this book to be interesting and frustrating, and then at the end quite sort of illuminating, and it disguised itself in a really gentle way that I found very effective. This book is mostly from the perspective of a uh, woman who's a bit of a neurotic, um, and she lives in a house that was owned by her mother, and her life is kind of upended when her brother's new girlfriend comes and has to stay there alone with her for a month. And the thing I liked the most about this book was the perspective we're seeing it through. I liked how unlikable the main character was. Uh, she was quite reminiscent of uh, Daniel Day-Lewis's character in Phantom Thread. The main dynamic in the first half of this book is this OCD Reynolds Woodcock bitch as she has to deal with this very sort of carefree, rule-breaking woman who has come in to live in the house with her. I think having unlikable characters is a good way to make a character complex in a short amount of time, and I thought that this character uh, grew and progressed and was consistently interesting. While her changes in character are quite intense towards the end, they always came across as totally believable to me. The viewpoint is also excellent for someone who's kind of a step down from an unreliable narrator. They're not unreliable, they're just kind of blinded. And you can tell that there's something else to Eva that we're not seeing because the main character is kind of perceiving her wrong. And it creates this interesting contrast between the two women that was always revealed in unique ways. For example, I really liked when both of the women talked about their first periods, and while Eva had a far more uh, traumatizing and difficult experience with her first period, she is uh, less angry and vitriolic about it than Isabel, who had a comparatively easier experience with her first period, but remembers it in a worse way because of the general privilege she's had in her life. This book is set in post-World War II, I believe it's the Netherlands, and it's interesting to see a perspective on that time period from someone who went through uh, World War II and its aftermath, more or less untouched. So there's some good subtlety to the writing with regards to uh, perspective and lived experience, and you can kind of tell from hints in the first half who Eva is and what happened to her family. You probably won't get the specifics though. When Isabel starts to remember the way her mother interacted with people and uh, she gets a new awareness of things that happened in her past, different colour comes into things that we've already seen and that's because of how internalised and shut off the main character is. So yeah, I think it's a great choice and I think that Isabel's a really great main character. So I'm sucking this book off from the get-go, but there was a lot about this book that I really didn't like um, and that was mostly in the middle because in the middle this book turns into a sappy romantic drama with cringe dialogue and dramatic passionate sex that is just the best thing in the world. God, I love sex. I can't wait to try it one day. When this book turns into that, there is all of the requisite uh, uh, subtle hand touching. There's all of the requisite uh, a gaze held too long. There's all the uh, requisite neurotic woman represses her sexuality. You hit all the tropes and it's kind of like a speed run in this book. There's also a secret being kept that will tear them up part in the third act low point. So yeah, I wasn't a big fan of how the book fell into romantic drama conventions so uh, easily. There's a lot of media I was reminded of here, particularly Phantom Thread and also Portrait of a Lady on Fire, of course, and this book is identical to those two in some key ways. I think generally, uh, all over the book, the dialogue is sometimes a little weird. There's a few too many moments where characters say things like, um, you're acting too much like our mother and things like that. It's too unrealistic. Um, the first moment when the character Louis announces to Isabel that Eva will be staying in the house, I thought all of the dialogue there was weird and unnatural. I wasn't a big fan of it. There, there were also a lot of moments where characters would frustrate the main character and the way that uh, Isabel would show her frustration through dialogue was always written in the exact same way where she would kind of cut herself off. She'd go, you think that I with her, or why I order, you know, like, <laughs> it's always written the same. These are trends of bad books, and these bad books are usually these romantic dramas with the red covers. Uh, I, uh, I think the book edges quite close to that at points. The book starts quite tense, and you feel like there's something underneath it that's going to come out, and then the book turns into a sappy romantic drama where the characters are being pushed up against walls and orgasming ceaselessly, um, and I was like, dear god, please don't let this be the rest of the book. And then we hit the third act with a reveal involving a diary, and the colour is put back into the book and you understand what it was doing from the start, and then I ended up with a very positive experience of the book. 
I was worried that the setting of the book was just going to be an interesting place to set a historical drama and would not involve any real engagement with the setting or the issues that come with it, but then the book proves me wrong. This is a rare read where a reread of the book will give you more of it. Um, you can kind of get a feeling that a twist is going to come and you won't necessarily get all of the twist. I myself got about halfway there where I kind of figured out what it might do and then it did something slightly different but still in line with what I thought where I was like, there's some weird things that are being mentioned about this house. Uh, I feel like the house has to be related to this in some way. Um, and then it is and it, it was in a way I wasn't expecting, but um, yeah, the book begins with Isabel finding a plate in the garden, and that then has memories to a different thing that comes in towards the end. So, yeah, a, a lot of this book connects in ways that are quite good, and it plays out like a bit of a puzzle box. And it, it's such a controlled reveal in the third act, it makes me think that all of the romantic drama stuff might be gentle satire, but I am not entirely willing to say that. Even though I love the third act, and I love where we end up with the character at the end of the diary reveal, I felt like the author put themselves in a position where they had to explain a lot of Eva's character through diary entries written by her, and when I realized what it was going to do I went, uh oh, this is going to be clunky no matter what, and it was. I, I mean that there was heavy lifting to explain why Eva was thinking the way she was, and I feel like if the book had just been more direct and she had just written down what her plan was, or why she was mad instead of spelling it out through diary entries and like forced interactions with people and uh, like revelations that come at the expense of something quite uh, coincidental. Um, I, I just wish it was just more blunt at that point and it wouldn't have taken away from the book for me. Because we see way too much of the sneaky seduction angle of Louis and it reminded me of the ending of Saltburn where we get the reveal of the main character and then we have to see every single interaction where the main character had an ulterior motive and they have to turn away and do a sneaky grin for the camera or some shit. It reminded me too much of that. We only needed to see really the beginning of that. We only needed to see her meet Louis and we can fill in the gap. We don't need the gap filled for us. In the third act it becomes totally reasonable to view the book as a book about the resonating effects of World War II um, and particularly through the perspective of someone who didn't really give a fuck about them having their eyes opened. So it's it becomes an interesting book by the end. I think my biggest issue with the third act though is the ending and I know Alyssa from Nerdy Nurse Reads is gonna get mad at me because she's already said that she's annoyed that people are criticizing the ending because it is a happy ending and the happy ending is earned in some ways, uh, but I think personally the ending had to be unsatisfying. I was begging by the end of the book, don't let us see Eva again. Eva leaves, we know why she leaves, and the main character is made aware of all that they were ignorant of. And you can kind of leave the book there. We don't need a resolution in that kind of traditional sense, and I always much rather being left with an aftertaste in a book than having a nice little bow tied on top of it. I think especially for the weight of the reveal and what we're talking about, ending it on a happy moment cheapens a lot of it for me. Because I, I think that the ending is too clean only because of the subject matter in question. It has to be a little open and a little sour and, a, and not quite whole because that is probably the experience of so many of these people who went through the aftermath of World War II. There has to be something that isn't quite whole there and I feel like the book gives you that in a way that a sappy romantic historical drama would do, but in a way that felt free of irony. I can't quite claim that the book is lightly satirizing cheesy romantic dramas when the ending feels like it does that completely sincerely. Um, I would love to view the whole thing as like, ironically, like romantic erotic drama, and then it's about the after effects of World War II and it was using that, but I just don't think I can say that with the ending. But overall, I thought the book ended up being quite substantive, even though I didn't feel that the whole way. I found the book uh, mysterious, and I always got the feeling of it building towards something. The characters were great, uh, its style changes were memorable and pretty good on the whole, and I found that the commentary of the book was made you unique by its viewpoint perspective. So overall, yeah, I really like this book, and of the six Booker books that I've read so far, this one is pretty easily my favorite. So thanks so much, bye!